Welcome to Shri and Kira Live. As our world's been seemingly out of control, you have arrived at the voice of passionate action, being shared with wisdom, laughter, and clarity. Visionary spiritual teachers and best-selling authors Sri Ram Ka and Kira Ra invite you to open your mind, explore the greater meaning of our now experience, and to relax into your body and spirit. Bringing you fresh perspectives and timeless wisdom for the shifting paradigms, here are Sri and Kira. Welcome and namaste. Woo-hoo! Yeah, welcome and namaste, beloved ones. And hey, today, what's in your mouth right now? Are you eating something? Are you eating something? Are I you, see it. Are, I feel are you it. Biting your lip. <laughs> are you chewing your nail? Or what's that YouTube video that just got a million hits or something? The the senator that picked his ear and ate it or uh, something on TV. Let's not but but that. hey, what are you really eating? And when did growing food? When did being healthy become a crime? This is like fascinating what's going on right now. Well, there's an awful lot we can talk about. We're going to hit some of the highlights today, but one of the things that we've noticed in the past years is this increasing trend in North America, and that means the United States and Canada, to support big agriculture, to support the chemical companies. Well, and, and i got to jump companies. in, Tree, because it's not just there. You know, down in Central America, where we live, South America, other parts around the world, it's not even a choice. You just support them. I mean, down here in Guatemala, we had a civil war because of big agri. Well, we did, and it had a lot to do with uh, the, the big agricultural firms taking over the land of the indigenous, which is, which is another conversation. But right now, one of the things that over the last 10 years has gotten a fair amount of buzz in North America and elsewhere. I love that word, buzz. buzz. <laughs> is, is the Codex Alimentarius. And this now what? Wait a minute. What language is that? I I, I <laughs> let's just say it makes it sound special. Well, no. What it makes it sound like is, ooh, this must really be researched and important because of the way we've named it. I mean, really, just starting with the name, it grabs your attention, and that was the way. So most people would say, oh my God, this must be ominous. I can't read it. I can't look at what oh, they're doing. It, well, it is huge because the Codex Alimentarius Commission is influenced by the most powerful industries on the planet, including the food, agricultural, biotech, and pharmaceutical industries. Now, you know, there it is. There's the planet, basically. That's it. That's, <laughs> that's where the big money is. It is big money. Now, now, you know, their stated purpose, like so many of these laws that have uh, uh, seductive titles, you know, these, these, these things that pass Congress in the U.S., but their stated purpose is to ensure that global trade is facilitated uh, and that the consumers are protected. Well, agreed, agreed. And, you know, I just want to jump in and say that if you are joining us live, be sure to call us with your questions, comments, or requests for mini soul readings. We've got those numbers posted right there at SriAndKiraRadio.com or at BBSRadio.com. Jump on, give us a buzz. And Sri, I want to also mention that we have had several weeks of uh, beautiful listeners writing us at guest. That's our email, guest at SriAndKiraRadio.com. And we've got a few of them stacked up here as well. So well, a very interactive show. Absolutely. Well, the thing is, as we started talking about this kind of Big Brother Commission, the, the piece that, that really uh, stimulates Big me. Brother Commission. I'm sorry. I just have George Orwell in my head right now. <laughs> well, it is because as we move into the global economy, we, we've got a couple of uh, chefs in the kitchen. One of them is the WTO, the World Trade Organization, and they are the uh, Codex Alimentarius's policemen. <laughs> because absolutely. if you have a big fancy named codex, you better have some cops to make sure yeah. that it's enforced. And, and, and so here's the irony is one of the purposes of the WTO is to um, facilitate trade, but they also overrule and change the environmental ro- laws of various countries. Is So one of the things that's happened, here's, a, here's an example. In Europe, meaning the EU, mm. They don't allow the synthetic hormones that are in the U.S. and Canadian beef. Well, I love that. I absolutely love that. And we're also going to talk about Vermont because I love how the United States is starting to get on that, too. And so uh, for the privilege of holding their standard, Uh the EU gets to pay $130 million in compensation for not buying the polluted 
beef. No, I'm, I'm sorry. No, I, I was just going to say that. It's like, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sitting here holding my head, guys. You know, I kind of have that Home Alone. Remember that, that very first episode of Home Alone where they had the little kid there with the hands on either side of the head going, oh, that's exactly what I do when I'm hearing well, that. Well, at least one more thing. I'm, we'll, a, I'm we'll, one of those paintings. Who's that know, artist? She's slapping her face <laughs> going, oh, my God, I don't believe it. Well, Passionately. It's passionate action. It is passionate. <laughs> but but here, the thing that's kind of wild is the Europeans have a much higher standard uh, in terms of health and let alone their environmental standards. In Europe, food that has more than 0.9%, that's less than 1% of genetically modified ingredients must be labeled. You have yeah. to identify it. Yeah. Now, Canada and the U.S. are challenging this as unfair. I know because they want to sell us the crap. Pardon me. And, and, you know, the reality is that, you know, when we get to the United States and it's beyond the codex, you know, here's what's fascinating to me, Shri. Years ago, and for those of you that may be listening that remember, years ago, before this thing went into effect, remember, we had the codex, then we promoted the codex, then we sold it through Congress, the Senate, et cetera, then it got approved, then it got implemented. Well, up until the time of implementation, there was, I, I know myself, I was receiving tons of emails and there were articles and people were talking about it. But since it's been approved, it's become kind of this, there's nothing we can do. And the reality is the voice of passionate action is always doing something. something and it's it, right, and it's how we do it. It's not that we are um, beyond the ability of this. You know, one of the things that I, I have to jump in right now is talk about uh, the new Fed Up, and I love how they're marketing it as the FU movie, yeah, the Fed, Fed Up, Fed up. Yeah, <laughs> right? Yeah. And uh, many of you will probably already know, if you've read our articles, we have them posted at SriAndKiraRadio.com. They're at SriAndKira.com. You can go to BBS Radio. Read the articles because uh, I've got a link in there to Katie Couric's interview on, of all things, The Daily Show with Jon Stewart. And I thought that it was a fabulous interview. Although, Sri, for people like you and I that have been talking this forever, I have to admit I, there was a part of me that kind of giggled and went, really? We're just starting to talk about sugar? We're just starting to uh -huh. talk about soft drinks? But yay, at least we are. It's a positive step that says we are waking up to the poison that's being sold as food and the food that's being sold as poison. When did we allow this to happen? Well, it seems like there has been an ever-increasing uh, wave of denial on the part of the constituency, the consumers, the masses, along with an ever-increasing slippery slope of control uh, on the part of big government. You know, this, this codex has been claiming... The uh, codex. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're out to level the playing field to make sure that there's equal supplies, etc. Well, golly, in the United Kingdom, obesity and malnutrition are at record highs. Yeah. And in the United States, uh, uh, diabetes and obesity are at record highs. So uh -huh. we kind of wonder whose interests are they protecting? Big is, Pharma. Is this truly the, the basis of a huge conspiracy? Well, you know, before we go further into that, I know that our lines are filling up, plus I've got lots of people that have written us, and I want to talk about this because, believe it or not, guys, there is a voice of passionate action in this. I know that you might already be going, oh my gosh, I have so much to say about this. We've yet to touch on factory farming. We've yet to touch on uh, diabetes. We've yet to touch on so many things that are happening. And before we do, let's bring in the voice of our amazing listeners. So, Shri, we've, we've got some people waiting. Absolutely. We've got some emails we waiting. Some let's say, hello, how are you? Human to human, soul to Absolutely. soul level. So let's go to line one and, and welcome, uh, I think it's Gretchen from Minnesota. And hello, dear. Welcome. Namaste. Welcome, dear one. Namaste. Thank you. You are welcome. We are so delighted to share with you today. How can we support you? Well, um, this topic really is very true to my heart. I, the last several years, I've been very conscious of what I'm eating, um, you know, have turned over to vegan and really have spiritually evolved because of those choices. And so um, it's fun that you're talking about this topic, but also all the topics recently have been so great and uh, evolving. So thank you for that. Well, thank you um, but for I, I guess my in. question, yeah, uh, my question, I guess, is kind of around, um, there's just been so many miracles lately for me in my life, and it's exciting, and I feel like there's just a big culmination that's, that's coming, and I guess I'm 
kind of seeking any guidance or even validation of that feeling um, that I'm having right now. Because well, I'm I just, love that I'm you're saying excitement. that. And, <laughs> yeah, I love that you're saying that, and I love that you called in today because you know it's really funny, uh, and it kind of ties in that movie I was just talking about, the fed up movie that they're kind of uh, you know marketing as the fu. And the reason I'm laughing is because yeah. There is a huge, huge thing that's happening in your life. And they're telling me August. They're saying to you that you're, you have some kind of major, major miracle culmination happening in August. I see you traveling. I see you doing something you haven't done before or something you've dreamed about. And it's like you're laughing at the world and saying, I know a lot of you thought I was crazy. I know a lot of you wondered what I was doing. And it's like everything flips. It's like that all comes back and they're saying, please teach me. Please teach me. Please show me. Please keep going. And so the greatest gift that you can be offered today from the Archangelic Realm and, and uh, the amazing others that are around you is they're saying, keep going, keep walking, keep trusting, keep flowing, because you are doing it. And so I'm really glad you called today. Much love to you, Gretchen. Oh, thank you. I'm honored that you shared that message. Thank you. Thank you, sweetheart. Namaste. Shri, we have so many beautiful yeah. callers holding. Should we say hello to another person? Sure, let's do that. Let's go to uh, line three and say hi to Ryan. Well, hey, Ryan. Namaste. Welcome. Hi, how are you? We are delighted to speak with you. How can we serve you today? Um. Well, I just finished my first year of college yesterday, so I'd really like to hear... Um, a mini soul reading. My mom thought I should call in this morning and I agreed. So, Well, I'm glad that you agree. <laughs> it's important to call when you, when you feel good about it. And thanks mom for the nudge, but I'm glad that you agree because I, and the reason I picked up on that love is because for you, the next couple of years are, I don't want to use the word challenging as much as I want to use the word illuminating. Um, you're going to have a lot of experiences that are going to surprise you. Kind of that like, wow, didn't see that one coming. Yet it was something that in the hindsight will make complete sense. And they keep showing me, um, it's cute. It's like a house of cards being built out of pyramids. You know how the bottom level, you take the two cards and you put them together and then you put those together and you build like three, four pyramids and lay the cards on top. They're saying your first year built your pyramids. Now you're ready to look at the bigger picture and to pay attention. And they were to say, if there was one thing that should guide your life for the next, and they're using 18 months for the next 18 months, it's to look at the bigger picture, pay attention. And, and it's like immediately witness the experience without drowning in it. Because three years from now, there's a huge offer coming your way, really big that right now probably would blow your consciousness. And so Keep moving with that and allow it to come forward. And for you, pyramid energy is really strong. Look at trinities, look at triangles, look at things that are in the shape of the pyramid and, and watch how that unfolds for you. What an honor to have you on the planet. Keep going, Angel. I want to talk to you again in three years or before. Thank you so much. You're so welcome, Angel. Namaste. Have a great summer. Thanks for calling. Well, you know, speaking of threes, Ryan inspired me, and I'm looking at pyramids, so I think that we should just have one more person come on in before we continue. Okay. Well, we can head right to line two and say hi to Brian. Hey, Brian. Welcome back. Hi. How are you? We're how excited to me? say hi to you. We can hear you just fine, and we're glad you're here. What's going on oh. with you today, my love? <laughs> Well, we've uh, we've uh, got a large oak tree in our backyard, and uh, the bees are swarming today. Uh, so mm. I have uh, I have a beehive that's like thirty feet up, and the bees they do a dance every year. It's called swarming, that's uh -huh. where they uh, kind of nominate a new queen, and it's actually kind of a very exciting experience. Wow, yeah, I love that you called bees. today and that they're nominating the new queen, that they're saying we are collectively deciding what is in the best interest of our harmony to continue because, indeed, talking about what we're eating and how we ingest and how we nourish ourselves really is the best interest of yeah. how we move forward. It, know, it, it's a celebration. And what an example of avoiding overpopulation. You know, <laughs> it's kind of like, hey, you guys, we need another tree. You know? <laughs> <laughs> right, and, that you, and they and actually that you, congregated into the shape of a star. 
I love tree. that. <laughs> I absolutely love that because indeed we are, you know, stars represent so many amazing things. I mean, I think we could probably do a whole show on the energy of what a star represents, but I love that you called in today and I love that they're swarming and that you're paying attention because you've got this energy right now of pay attention, pay attention, pay attention. It's like for you, I see all these new opportunities coming in around you and they're saying, pay attention. It's right in front of you. And goodness gracious, those bees are certainly making sure that's happening, aren't they? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, so, uh, it, thanks for taking my call today. It's great to, it's great to be a part of the action again. As I've been, I, I, I've been listening to you guys for a number of years, since, actually since your very first show. So. Hmm. Well, well, thank you for, for staying aligned and, and sharing that glimpse because truly that's a dynamic experience and to stand witness to the swarmy bees. Indeed, and we love that you're part of the action. Make sure you give us a call anytime you feel called to. Thank you, Angel, for sharing today's great comment and pay attention. So much going on for you. You know, Shri, I this brings us right back to where we're at because we need to be paying attention. And I, and I have to say... I want to talk about a blast from blast from my own past, but I I guess maybe I need to admit I'm alive long enough for when McDonald's first started. <laughs> and 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 the reason I'm mentioning that you is You mean there was a world before Yeah, McDonald's? I know, I know, I know. And and I was my father's remote control, but we won't talk about that either. You know, well, go was, change the channel. Know, now that you <laughs> I think, I think TVs were black and white when McDonald's came out. Well, they were. And, and here's what's so cool is that there was no advertising that was happening on TV because it was such a small little chain. And the first McDonald's opened up, it was about 20 miles from my house. And, you know, when I grew up, it was all about the home cooked meal and about everybody was home for dinner or gosh knows you got in trouble. And but here's what I want to share is that I remember it was a big thing that my mom piled us up all in the car and we were going to drive this, this quite a few miles to go downtown. Uh, cause I lived way out on a farm and, um, to have these, uh, burgers that everybody was talking about. And so check this out. Very first McDonald's experience. We are at McDonald's. My mother buys the hamburgers. We all sit down. We're all excited at our little yellow plastic table and the burgers and the little paper. And it was very exciting. And we all took one bite and my mother ripped the hamburgers out of our mouths because that the quality and the taste was so manufactured and so poor that I literally remember my mother ripping the hamburgers out of our mouths, throwing them out and leaving and angry that anyone would serve their children this food. Yeah, it was it's quite a, a quite a shift from uh, the consciousness that came out of the 30s and 40s in, into the trends. I'm not that old. No, I'm no, talking no, 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 the no, 60s here. Oh, absolutely. Farm, farm the hel- and healthy food and that yes. food tasted like food. You know, we didn't need labels like organic because everything was organic. Yeah, yeah. You know, you would look for the worms. <laughs> you know, I'm not kidding. You know, when you bought food, it was like, oh, does that apple have a worm in it? You know, yeah. or is that ear of corn? I mean, you you knew it was organic. Well, I, I remember that clearly that, you know, we would go out and we'd gather the corn. And uh, if it didn't have a worm in it, it wasn't right. It wasn't good corn. <laughs> That's how you knew it was good. I mean, it ba- I mean, really a difference. Or I remember when they started waxing the fruit. Remember, that was the next stage. They started waxing fruit so it would look longer and stay prettier on the shelves. Well, and plastic wrapping, the cuts of meat. You know, one of the things that's happened over the decades is an ever-increasing detachment of of the children from where food comes from and what is food. Right, because of the advent. You know, I I have to admit, I grew up, and I know I've got some homegirls listening from Pluckham in New Jersey, and uh, and there was this little thing called the Pluckham Store. And we used to go down there. It was right across from the rock that told us George Washington had spent the night there. And Lou, the guy who owned the Pluckham Store, would get your products from behind the counter, I kid you not, guys, and your meats, you went over to the butcher who cut them and wrap them in the white paper. They're, you know, the big stores were not as easily available. Things were local, things were organic, and the few products that were not, or that we now buy in the grocery store and, and, and take advantage, think of nothing, you either made yourself or didn't put into your diet. Yeah, yeah, no, quite a different era indeed. And certainly a reflection uh, of a different consciousness Mm -hmm. because, uh, you know, as we look at the transition from uh, uh, a world of of farming being uh, this this 
industrious, uh, pride-filled enterprise where a person would, would, would truly find great meaning and strength out of uh, their livelihood as a farmer, turning it into factory farms and mass-produced and right. chem use of chemicals and over over-planting, uh -huh. over, over consuming the soil, I mean, on and on and on. The thing that's happened over the last 30, 40 years is that the industrial revolution has hit the agriculture. It has hit right. so many areas. And one of the things, you know, we're going to, in the, later in the show, we're going to talk a little bit about vegetarianism and... Uh, oh, no, the big V! And really, the complete idiot's guide to enjoying vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> vegetables? Well, Sri, that's my french fries there, dude. And, and you know, guys, we have so much to share in this show. And, and, you know, if you're calling in, stay on the line. We have a lot of show, I mean, a lot to go through. But we're going to take just a real quick short short break. And when we come back, we're going to dive more into that codex. We're going to dive more into the, really the union. I think it's a sacred union between big pharma, big agra. And what's going on with the kids in this country that we have such an epidemic of obesity, diabetes. And I read today, guys, New York Times posted today, they are starting to give kids Ritalin at two years old. We have a lot uh, a to talk show. about. We'll be back.